Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you a PCB by quad antenna for 2.4 GHz. It'd be useful for Wi-Fi as well as 2.4 GHz RC control. You could also use it for Bluetooth and other applications. The main parts you need for this project would be the PCB parts here and an RG402 pigtail as shown here. I did not design the dimensions for this PCB by quad. In fact, the design came from wifi-antennas.com and the admin there had painstakingly took the trouble to simulate and come up with the dimensions for 2.4 GHz. Using those dimensions, I asked a friend to help me fabricate these PCBs. They look good except for the fact that the two holes here do not line up with the slot here. So I need to use a file to make a notch here and here so that the two notches would line up with the two holes on the on the reflector and then I could install the nylon standoffs. Finally it's done. The following took a while but here it is. Now we could install the standoffs as these two notches will line up with the holes of the reflector. We need to prep this SMA pigtail before we could use it. I'm going to show a time-lapse video of how to prep the ends here. Well, after all the cutting and trimming, your coaxial cable should look something like this. And the end has to fit in to the slot here of the signal element. Basically, you have to orientate it and have the wire go through the hole here. Yep. Before soldering the coaxial to the signal element joints here, we should insert the coaxial through the back of this refractor. In this shot, you can see I've installed the signal element and basically these standoffs are 17.5mm in height, which is crucial. I'm going to adjust the height if necessary using my SWR meter. I'm checking for a shot between the signal and ground. Looks pretty neat, happy with that. Alright, I have the bi-quad antenna hooked up to my vector network analyzer and if you notice, I have not yet soldered the braille wires to the reflector yet. So this allows me to adjust the height if necessary. Anyway, let's take a look at the VSWR. Okay, the scan shows that the Center frequency 2450, the white line here, and getting a VSWR of 1.5, which is not too bad. However, this bi quad antenna performs best at somewhere here, which is the green line, and that is 2340 MHz. After trial and error with different heights of the element from the reflector, I arrive at 16 mm which gives me the best VSWR. At the center frequency of 2450, where the white line is, as you can see, the VSWR is now 1.2. I'm going to solder the red wires to the reflector and then test it at a few to see if this is any good. During Christmas, I picked up this radio control helicopter from Amazon for 20 bucks, and it is really fun to fly. The only complaint I have is the short radio range of about 50 feet. To use the bi quad antenna on the radio controller, I open it up and replace the 3CM antenna wire inside with a female SMA connector. The SMA's coaxial consists of the signal wire in the middle and braided wires on the outside for ground. In all of my previous projects, I simply shorted the braided wires of the coaxial to the negative lead of the battery supply to ground the SMA. However, this doesn't work for this controller because there's some continuity between the power supply's ground and the RF input. 
To solve this problem, I had to undo the solder joint between the battery's negative and the braided wires of the SMA's coaxial. This means that we would be using an open ground for the antenna. Now that was my spectrum analyzer picking up 2.4 signal from the radio controller. It's surprising to see that such a cheap toy would have spe spectrum technology. Here are some still shots showing its frequency hopping across the 2.4 band between 2340 MHz to 2560 MHz. Now let's head to the field to see if we get any increase in RC range with using the bi-quad antenna. Alright, here we are at the field and I have the RC bird, a normal antenna and a bi-quad antenna. And I have my Zeno Hubson quadcopter here. I will have the drone set up overing over there and then you will capture how far the bird will fly with radio control first with using the normal antenna and then with the bi quad antenna For the second flight of the RC bird, I'm using the bi quad antenna on the transmitter here and you'll see how far it can go. Well, to conclude this video, I'm pretty happy with the performance of the bi quad antenna. It's useful for RC applications like this one here, where it's used to increase the RC range of a cheap toy. I'm sure I have lots of fun playing with this radio control bird now that it has adequate range. That's all I have for this video. Lastly, I would like to thank the folks at wifi-antennas.com for sharing the dimensions of this PCB bi quad design. I've always been skeptical about PCB antennas because of the dielectric property of PCB. It goes to show that with proper simulation design, a PCB bi quad antenna will work as well as a wire band version. Alright, thanks for watching.